solar filament dryer SH010203 and 03 with maximum temperatures of 50, 70 and 85 degrees Celsius. How good is this one? And can it dry the nylon which was on open air almost two months? Let's find out. Welcome to my tech one. Sol sent me their newest filament dryer. This is SH03. I got this box for free, but there is no additional payment from their side. But this video and the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker and by my patent supporters. Few specifications from the website. This dryer has two independent chambers with the maximum power of 200 watts for each chamber and the maximum temperature is 85 degrees Celsius. It has also auto moisture removal. This means it will open some ventilation on the backside and let out the moisture from time to time. It has two PTC heaters and they rotate the air inside and this will result more equal heating of the filament but I would still like to see better rotating of the spool. I just like to mention in every filament drying video, maybe the components will start to integrate this possibility too. Very shortly, why do we need a filament dryer? Well, every filament will absorb moisture from the air and some filaments are more sensitive to this. Now, those 70 degrees Celsius dries are far enough for almost everything. Only nylon, PPA, PPS and similar filaments require these high temperatures. On 85 degrees Celsius, we can dry them much faster. In the package, beside the main unit, we have some short Teflon tubes, power cable and user manual. Hmm. There is no desiccant inside. There is a warning, please do not remove the desiccant package for drying tasks, but there is no desiccant, they should really include some. Understand that they will be dried together with the hot air and for the storing they will reduce the moisture inside, but they should include one. This is the back side and this is the only exit for the filaments in upper direction, which I don't really like. I would like to have the options, for example, if I want to enter in horizontal direction. And these are the ventilation holes, so there is a warning, do not block this opening. Switch and power cable plug. This is a screen and nice to see instructions next to it, they're always here. And also I like this locking mechanism because I can rotate the spool with one hand in just two seconds. They're much better compared to those sliding locking mechanisms. Hmm. The rotating is not too smooth. And I think I found what is the problem. Look at this distance between rollers. More than 18 centimeters, almost 19. And when we place a spool, it is very deep inside and push quite big forces. And that's why it is not rolling easily. Look how smooth are the bearings. But because of the distance, when I insert the spool, the friction is much bigger. Let's turn it on. The screen is nice and bright and visible even from bigger angle. Here I can select the chamber 2 or 1. Then I can do the settings, for example, press it values for PLA or PET, PTG. And then this is the target temperature and this is the current temperature. Let's say I don't want to dry the pitch on 65 but on 60. And this is the countdown time. Currently it is 8 hours but I can change this by jumping of 2 hours. Nice. And here I can start or pause the drying. And if I want to stop it when it's blinking That's it. It's time for my sponge drying test and this will be its position somewhere in the center of the spool, of course after I add 2 ml of water to it. And this is the input of the hot air, this is the exit for the moisture and I'll try to place the sensor approximately somewhere here. Unfortunately these holes are big enough only for one wire, but for this sensor I have three, so unfortunately I cannot use these holes. 
So it will be tested in this position and the sensor will be very close to the input hot air. But there will be some small gap here. The data is collected by Arduino Uno and uh, my laptop, but the current temperature and relative humidity I can see on the screen too. And currently the relative humidity is very low, only 26% in this room. Yes, on winter this is typical. I usually I do this test on 45%, but what can I do? We will see anyway the temperatures. Empty sponge weight 0.562. Two point six one three, a little bit more, but it will be fine. After approximately seven minutes, it reached eighty five degrees Celsius according to its own sensor, and I could hear that the ventilation on the back side opened, so it is letting out the moisture. But according to my sensor, the temperature inside is sixty seven degrees Celsius and 11% relative humidity. But of course the sensors are on different location, but by time these two temperatures should be closer to each other. And I can feel that the hot air is running out through this gap because I couldn't close completely the lid because of the cables on the side. Let's check what can we see with the thermal camera. This is the back side. From the right side and even here we can see that the lid is partly opened. And this is the front side. 60 degrees Celsius. For the short touch it is okay, but if I hold my hand here, then it becomes too hot. I'm not sure if you can see, the sensor is very close to that input hot air. But according to my sensor, after 22 minutes, the temperature inside is 73 degrees Celsius and according to its own sensor 85-86 degrees. Only later I noticed that the sensor is not exactly above the hot air, but a little bit to the right. Here the temperature is lower, but this also means that the filament will not be dried equally. Time for the half hour measuring. Oh, this is completely dry. Zero point five five six. But I'm collecting the temperature, so I continue this half more hours. One hour measuring, and the temperature inside is stuck on 74 degrees Celsius. <laughs> 0 0.528. Drier than before, because it had some moisture. Turning off and now we collect some cooling data. Usually these PTC heaters don't turn off immediately to cool down the electronics inside, but this one does. Let's analyze the result. On X axis we can see the time in minutes. On Y axis we can see the temperature and relative humidity. 30 minute measuring and 1 hour measuring. Let's analyze the temperature first. It reached those maximal 74 degrees Celsius quite fast. Now the problem is that it was set to 85 degrees Celsius. And yes, the lid was minimally open, but the gap was extremely small and actually the sensor was placed above the input hot air. So I think this is quite big difference. About relative humidity, uh, here we can see a small break and here I mentioned that the steam hole was open and we can clearly see that it works really nice. And then it reduced the relative humidity, so this part works nice, but I'm not too happy with this temperature. About the sponge drying test, it slowly became useless at these temperatures because even after 30 minutes it was completely dried. Well actually I have a sensor which can fit to this hole. But this is only a temperature sensor, no relative humidity. It will be just 10 millimeters above that input hot air and I can completely close the lid. Set to 85 degrees Celsius and the temperature immediately started with the rising, but I wait half hours because by that the temperature should stabilize. But this time it is interesting to see that these two sensors are showing very similar temperatures. Actually I don't have to wait half hours. After 10 minutes the temperature inside is already 84-85 degrees Celsius according to its own sensor 
and according to mine it oscillates between 80 and 84 degrees. Let's try something. Easy PA nail on from Sanlu and actually I forgot about it a little bit so it was in that corner on open air almost two months now. One quick method to check if the filament is wet is to extrude the filament and when it stops with extruding cut the extruded line and follow the oozing. If it is big it needs drying. But also you can just listen to this popping sound. Just two parts for the measuring. If you don't understand this part, just check my previous video, I explain it detailed there. But I uh, hope you can see the stringing and you understand that it's a problem. I'm wondering are there any applications where you can use this property? <laughs> this should be 20 millimeters, 20.33, and this is 100 millimeter long. 99.47 now let's do the calculation the calculation is explained in my previous video so these are the design lengths and these are the measured lengths and this is the equation for the s this is the scale factor in this case the shrinking is approximately 1.1 percent but this is more important this constant offset this is the equation for it and this is huge number 0 0.545 millimeters this is huge if the filament is dry this should be much closer to the zero and now let's try to dry it but i measure it too 991.35 grams and it looks like in the center it dries better because there are the holes so i place the spool in the center Set the maximal temperature and now we measure it every hour. In the meantime, I'm measuring the noise from half meter distance. Approximately 33 decibels, that's quiet with one chamber heating. This is the last measuring. It's quite late, I want to go to sleep, but first I have to print with this filament and later I will analyze the data. Even now I can see much better surface quality and this time no stringing at all. Before the measuring just look at this difference in the print quality. And now let's measure them. 19.91 millimeters and the bigger one 99.40 let's do the calculation and the calculation there is a small minimal change on the scale factor 2 but this c is more important and look how small is this number now 0.04 millimeters approximately so this is a great example how drying affects of this constant offset and this means that the filament is now dry at least outer loops but let's analyze those numbers from the drying these are the measured points and if I align this equation to these points, I can predict what happens in the future and somewhere in infinity this will become a constant. This is this D value, a perfectly dry filament theoretically. And from this I can calculate the moisture and the start moisture was 2.56%. And when I stop the drying and start the printing, the moisture was 1.6% approximately, but it is important to understand that this is average moisture. And I'm quite sure that outer loops are much drier compared to those inside. That's why with the nylon it is very important to continue the printing from the filament dryer. I'll explain this method later soon because I created this tool on my website which will do this calculation for us, but it will be explained in a separate video. Overall I like the dryer. 85 degrees Celsius of the hot air, it is accurate and it is relatively quiet. Also I can rotate the spool with my hand only in two seconds. Only two things I don't like here. I think distance between rollers should be a little bit smaller and also I don't like that uh, maximal hot air we will get only in the center. So if I will dry only one spool in the chamber, I will place it in the middle and it will be fine. But uh, if I want to dry two spools at a time, in that case the inner part will be dried better compared to the outer. 
And also I have a question for you. Was this review too complex? Maybe I should just do some printings, dry the filament and show the results after and it will be much simpler. Anyway, thank you for watching this video until the end and happy drying and printing.